I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Origin 600i, and we're starting right now. Origin Jump Arts at your service. Core system operational. Welcome to a Star Citizen Ship Buyer's Guide. What's up, citizens? This is Subliminal, and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the Origin 600i with a comparison on how those features rank amongst competing ships so you can make an informed buying decision. The next ship I'll review in this series will be the Mustang Gamma. I would like to know your thoughts on it and what ship you'd like to see next down in the comments. If you are a subscriber or familiar with my review format, you can hop to the time on the screen to get started unless you'd like to see some exterior footage of the 600i. For everyone else, if we're just meeting, I'm Subliminal. My passions are PC gaming, Star Citizen, and content creation. This channel brings them together in harmony. The primary focus of this series is to review a ship's data and compare that data to similar ships you might also be considering, so you can make an informed buying decision. We'll start with a brief overview, followed by a stack comparison. We'll cover weapons, ship components, take a tour of the ship's interior, review some pros and cons, and finish up with my thoughts of the ship being reviewed. For comparison, I pick around 10 ships that may be similar in price, part of the same variant or class, and likely to be upgraded from or to the ship being reviewed. The comparison slides will feature the ship's values and rank amongst those ships, along with the names and values of the best and worst ships. A Google Sheets document with those ships and data are linked in the description. This information is sourced from multiple sources, some with conflicting data. I have chosen the data that I think is most accurate. Information and thoughts reflect the current state of the ship and the persistent universe. When changes to the ship or the PU are pertinent, I will make a follow-up video. I hope you enjoy this review. If you do, check out some of my other reviews in this series. Consider subscribing, and if not, your feedback is greatly appreciated. Now let's catch up to everyone else. The Origin 600i Explorer is a multi-role luxury vessel that features an exquisitely detailed hull design that balances performance and versatility in a sleek and timeless form. The 600i is designed with the cutting-edge modular technology, allowing you to customize your ship to your needs. It is manufactured by Origin Jumpworks a terra-based spaceship and engine manufacturer of high-quality luxury products. The 600i Explorer is one of two 600 series variants. The 600i Touring is also available. A review on it will be coming soon. The 600i is currently flight ready. It is unavailable to purchase on the Pledge Store at this time, but originally sold for $475 and on average sells for $411 on the gray market. It is not currently available to purchase with in-game credits, but that out of the way, Let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I have selected the following 10 ships. The Google Sheets document is linked in the description. Now let's get to it. The 600i comes in at around 280,000 kilograms. It has a max crew size of five, a cargo capacity of 40 SCU, has over 29,000 hit points across its body. Its shield generators can withstand over 87,000 hit points of damage. This is where the 600i really sets itself apart. The Hammerhead is the only ship currently in the game with more shields. Features a gun DPS of almost 2,000, as well as a theoretical DPS of over 9,700. Its missiles do almost 25,000 damage. Its fuel tanks hold 30,000 fuel units. Its max yaw pitch rate of 30 degrees per second is pretty good compared to the competition. It has an SCM speed of 145 meters per second. Its 975 meters per second top speed is also pretty good for a ship this size. It takes 42.91 seconds to reach its max speed. Its quantum drive has 74 megameters per second quantum speed. So travel from Port Alizar to Hurston will take you about seven minutes and 14 seconds. Enough time to watch one of my videos. It has a QT range of 128 gigameters. So it can travel from Port Alizar to Hurston four times before needing to refuel. And finally, leaving Hurston's atmosphere will take you about 10 minutes. Let's talk about its firepower. The 600i packs three size 5 hardpoints with one size 5 M7A laser autocannons each. These M7As have 2400 energy damage with 32 RPM for a total of 1300 DPS and a 7300 meter range. It features two remote turrets with two size 3 DR model XJ3s each. These XJ3s have 310 distortion damage with 280 RPM for a total of 1400 DPS and a 1700 meter range. For missiles, it has four size 5 MSD 543 missile racks with four size 3 Arrestor 3s each. Arrestor 3s are cross-section, 
have 1,553 mix damage, a 3.89 second lock time, and a 9,000 meter lock range. This is a total of 12 missiles. Now for the components. The standard components available on the 600i are as follows. It has one size 3 grade C civilian class frost burn cooler, one size 3 grade C military class super drive power plant, one size 3 grade C industrial class stronghold shield generator, and last but not least we have one size 2 grade C civilian class Odyssey quantum drive. Now let's take a look at the interior. Coming up the cargo elevator, we enter into the cargo hold. The cargo hold of the 600i is big enough to practically fit an Ursa rover, two Cyclones, two Drake Dragonflies, or Noxes, or 24 SCU on the cargo racks. Moving on, we enter into a hallway with an elevator to the right and stairs to the left. We'll go down the stairs and enter into the barracks. The barracks have four beds to log out in. Next we have a room with some type of cabinet and escape pod. Moving on we have a locker room and two bathrooms. Now let's go back to the other side of the lower deck. To our left we have an elevator and straight ahead we have captain's quarters. Please be aware of the death zone. Walk there at your own risk. To our left we have a console, and to our right we have a wall plant. Now let's head to the top deck. Upon exiting the elevator we have some escape pods for the bridge crew. To our left we have the bridge. The bridge quarters features a pilot seat with four multifunction displays. A co-pilot seat with two MFDs and access to the top remote turret. and an assistant to the co-pilot seat with two MFDs and access to the bottom remote turret. Leaving the bridge, we enter into a loft-style room that overlooks the cargo hold. It also holds two scanning stations that are not functional in 3.4. Moving on, we have elevator two to our right. We'll head up the stairs into the armory where you have access to suits and weapons. Headed back, we'll enter to the common area with a bar. Next we have a couple of seating areas. Down to the lower level we have access to some of the remaining SCU not found in the cargo hold. To our left, we have an engineering room with some cool spaceship stuff. Heading back, we have a kitchen. Continuing on, we have another room with cargo racks and another engineering room with more spaceship stuff. Next, we have a rec room with a pool table. And finally, we have a media area with a television. I would say its pros are its shield capacity of over 8,700 for sure, a max shot pitch rate of 30 meters per second for a ship this size, its max speed of 975 meters per second is pretty good, its missile payload is noteworthy, and of course, well, it's beautiful, just to name a few. Its cons are, I feel its use of space could have been better done, its 40 SCU seems a little low for a ship this size, and it may have been cool to see an included snub fighter. It's riddled with bugs. You have a homicidal bedroom. Elevators are bugged sometimes, so it's best to leave and exit through the cargo elevator. And the white sphere in the middle of the MFDs is blinding. Although there is a fix for this. Just reduce your shields down to 90%. Why? Because alpha, that's why. Other than the obvious cons that come with the ship size, that's all I can think of. I think the 600i is a superb addition to any fleet. Its shield capacity is considered by some to be OP, and can turn the tide of any battle. $475 is a lot of money, but not in comparison to some of the other ships in its class. The design is really where the 600i gets me. The clean and exquisite lines are simply jaw-dropping. It may look like its design was inspired by a bedpan, 
but it's the most beautiful bedpan I've ever seen. The next ship I'll review will be the Mustang Gamma. Let me know in the comments what you like and dislike about it. Did you like this guide? Like it. For more weekly Star Citizen content, subscribe by hitting the bell and comment what ship you'd like to see featured in the next episode of a Star Citizen Ship Buyer's Guide. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.